Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. And I've been using the new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 for about a few days now. And I want to give some updated impressions. Obviously not quite a full review that will come a little later, but wanted to give you an update on the different thoughts that I have after using this phone. I want to talk about that under display camera that they use on the inside display, talk about some other design choices that they made, and of course, the price of the Fold 3. I will also be doing a quick impressions update on the flip as well, so stay tuned for that video. But for now, let's go ahead and take a look at the Fold 3. So first things first, overall, very impressed with the design. It's very premium. You could tell it's just durable overall. I don't feel like the Fold is going to get loose. The hinge is going to be very strong over time. Yes, you still can see that crease in the middle. You can still feel it, so that hasn't been worked out yet. So first things first, that power button does couple as a fingerprint scanner, works really well, works how it should, very quick, accurate, easy. However, one thing I noticed is when I go into my phone and I just open it right away, it goes to my pattern. However, my thumb isn't always in the right spot to actually register on the fingerprint scanner. So what I did was actually scan this part of my pointer finger and it worked to register as a fingerprint. Now, realistically, I wouldn't recommend doing this. It's probably not as secure. It might be, I don't actually know, but I'm doing it at the moment and I just set it on down and it unlocks it right away. So it does work really well. I haven't had any issues with it. And now on to that display. I love that they added 120 Hertz to the front display. It just makes it more of a seamless experience, much more smooth. So it's not choppy on the front screen. Then you open it up and you're like, oh, it's much smoother on the inside. They're both extremely smooth. Now, with that display, you'll notice up at the top, especially right now with an orange being a color, anytime there's a color up towards the top, it's very challenging to see the under display camera. Now, if I go ahead and jump into settings in dark mode, you'll notice it shows up a little bit more. It actually just looks like a punch hole design. So when it is a black screen, it does somewhat show up as a punch hole. And then if it's a completely white screen, you can see it as well. So when into Twitter, here's an example of the lighter screen. It looks a little weird on camera, but it's definitely noticeable. However, I did find it is better. In my opinion, it's better looking than a punch hole design. So it is going in the right direction in terms of steps. And then, like I said, anytime there's color over it, you really don't notice it, especially while watching videos or playing games. If it is covering up that under display camera, it's hardly noticeable. Unless you're really looking at it, you really don't notice it. It seems like more of an overall seamless experience. I know a lot of people were asking about the quality of it. Yes, the quality is not as good as other front facing cameras. I wanna make note though, when you switch to that front facing camera, you'll notice that technology kind of goes away. It doesn't show pixels on it anymore. So you can see the actual camera and there you go. It just kind of disappears. So really cool example of how, like I said, it really just looks seamless, especially when there's color and things going on. You really don't notice it. It looks like a full out display. Now, realistically, the quality is not as good. However, I don't really take any pictures with this. This is more of a webcam. If I'm on a Zoom or video chat, that front facing camera, you have a front facing camera here, but also realistically, what I'm gonna do just about every time is tap this upper right-hand corner, screen preview is on, and I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around and take a picture with these three cameras there. So that's just about always what I'm gonna do when I'm taking a selfie on this foldable phone. I'm gonna take advantage of the better lenses. Samsung is also adding in features to specific apps and even third-party developers are. So for example, this upper left one, see your shots right away. If I take a quick picture, I can see it. I can zoom in on it real quick. If I don't get the shot I want, I can just go ahead and take another and it will just add them over to the left. Again, just utilizing all of that screen real estate and there's a lot more. I'm not going to dive too much into the software. However, there's a lot of nice additional features such as the Samsung browser or the Chrome browser. It gives you more of a desktop-like experience. You'll see with the tabs up towards the top. Also, for example, if there is a link I wanna to go to and I press and hold on it, I can open it in another in other window. So if I press that, Check it out, I can have two of the same exact app open side by side and not leave the web page that I was on and I can go into youtube.com or you know whatever link I was trying to open up side by side. Obviously don't have to use that vertically, I can go this way as well. So not only Chrome, but another one that I really like 
the addition they've done is Spotify here. So if we're listening to any specific music here, let's go to maybe release radar and I play something, it will, I'm gonna pause it so I don't get uh, copyright struck, but you'll see in the bottom left here is the album art, some controls and I can scroll through while it's playing. I can skip down here, I'm gonna pause it again, or tap on that specific album and it will show up here in full screen. So again, taking really full advantage of this large screen. There are other apps like Calendar Messaging which really use the screen real estate. So I'd like to see that happen to a lot more apps. Now there's also some labs features, which interestingly enough, let's go to Instagram. So you'll see Instagram doesn't go throughout the full screen. This is just my profile here. Now anyways, you can actually resize the aspect ratio of apps within what they call labs. There's a lot of other options that you can do. Hey, settings is just another one which utilizes both sides of it. Now under advanced features, just go into labs. And here it is, multi-window for all apps. You can turn that on. You can customize app aspect ratio. So now let's take a look at what happens if I go find Instagram. Come on, there we go. It's at app default 16.9, however, what if I just want to change it to full screen? Let's check it out. Well, would you look at that? Instagram is now completely full screen via labs. It works really well. So kind of cool if you find an app that isn't actually sized correctly, you can really just go into labs and customize it to your liking. So nice that Samsung is thinking about those software side things to help out, I guess, other developers that don't want to add it into their app. Now, a couple more things when it comes to design. First of all, there's a bit of a rocking. So when I have it fully opened, it actually rocks side to side on the corners, but even when it is closed as well, let's go ahead and unlock it there, um, and I have it set down, it will rock on the corners when I'm using it. So with that camera being just in the corner there and raised, it will rock when I'm trying to use the phone flat on a surface. It can be a little annoying. I wish they would have maybe done something to eliminate that rocking, especially because if you're trying to type or use it, it's just a bit annoying to have it rocking while you do so, but a lot of other phones have that too. Now on the positive side of things, one thing I notice is the vibration motor is great, whether I'm typing on a keyboard, getting a notification. So I don't know what they did with the vibration motor, but Samsung did a really good job. It's very crisp. It's not very loud either. I know that's a big thing with vibration. Also wanted to mention the price, pretty cool. Samsung actually launched the Z Fold 3 at a lower price point than the Z Fold 2 launched at, which I hope that trend continues as these foldables get more and more refined, a little bit more mainstream. Now with that being said, I think one of the ways that they brought the price down was by not adding in any upgraded lenses into the back. So there's no new camera system whatsoever that Samsung hasn't released in the past already. However, they did say they made some AI improvements to this specific camera to make the lenses better. Also gotta remember, it does have the Snapdragon 888 processor, which hopefully improves that image processing. I'll need a little bit more time to actually test out the cameras and I'll talk a lot more in depth about that in my full review. Anyways, it's nice to see Samsung improving these devices, making them more durable. I think that was the number one priority of theirs, it seemed like, because they added that water resistance and just an overall more refined and premium feeling device. So anyways, that is everything I wanna talk about for now with the Galaxy Z Fold 3. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, more video content coming soon, even on this flip. I really do love foldable devices. I think going forward, they will be what everyone wants in their pocket. And again, more videos coming on the Fold 3 as well. So make sure you click that subscribe button. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching.